It's mealtime in the nation of Yemen, but Ghalib al-Najjar isn't eating so that his children have enough food. He says he and his family live like ants or fish. We eat what we can find. Experts warn that in the months ahead, food is going to be harder to find in many more nations. A perfect storm of several problems is decimating the world food supply. It's being called the biggest food crisis since World War II. An estimated 285 million people face starvation. The head of the World Food Program, former South Carolina Governor David Beasley, says the world food supply already faced a catastrophe before the war in Ukraine. We're so short of funds already, and now with Ukraine, we've, uh, we've got 50% rations for people, for example, in Yemen. Niger, 50% rations. Chad, 50% rations. And 50% don't have anything. Those who are in extreme need. In the U.S., Americans have seen food costs rise almost 10% over last year, the steepest increase in 40 years. And experts predict it will lead to an increase in malnutrition among America's poor. In the developing world, however, it's become a matter of life and death. Russia and Ukraine together produce almost one-third of the world's wheat. But Ukrainian farmers have been sidelined by the war, and Russia has banned exports. They, they've got to be planting again and harvesting again. If, if they don't, then you're going to have a global supply problem. And the war in Ukraine is only the latest of many problems to hit the world food supply. Food prices were already high from soaring inflation and fuel costs. Fertilizer prices are now 40% higher than a month ago before the invasion of Ukraine, which along with high fuel prices makes it too expensive for some farmers to plant crops this year. We've never seen these type of increases in fertilizer. You're talking three, 400% increases in a 14 month period. Add to that a drought that damaged this spring's U.S. winter wheat harvest. In China, severe flooding late last year wrecked the wheat harvest and has the communist government trying to buy up as much of the world's supply as possible. And now a growing list of nations have banned agricultural exports to other nations. Reverend Eugene Cho of Bread for the World says the U.S. needs to do more to fight global hunger, asking Congress to approve $3.8 billion in supplemental emergency funding. But let's just talk about Afghanistan. 98% of the population do not have enough food to eat. 98%, 1 million children under the age of five could die from malnutrition by the end of this year. Even Africa's wealthiest nation faces a food crisis. According to Nigerian agri-investor Imal Silva, who told us a majority of Nigerians face malnutrition. The, those that are, are, are most affected are the majority um, in the lower and middle class, you know, in the society. You know, those that are living below a particular level of income would feel the pinch, and that's quite a large majority. And Beasley warns the world's food crisis could spiral into a political crisis. You got catastrophe coming to catastrophe. So don't be surprised if you don't see destabilization in several nations over the next six to nine months. Dale Hurd, CBN News.